With all these big games coming up and Battlefield 1 just released, I thought I want to play something old school. And what is better than good old Wolfenstein to start an old school gaming session with? For this little, let's say, old school review, we are going to take a look at the one game of the franchise everyone can agree on. The original Wolfenstein games, including Wolfenstein 3D, are just not enjoyable for many modern gamers for an extended period of time. Wolfenstein 2009 was somehow disliked by 50% of the community and the newer Wolfenstein games, The New Order and The Old Blood, are controversial for many old fans since they depart a bit more from the classic setting. So Return to Castle Wolfenstein remains in the single player area of the Wolfenstein franchise and that is exactly what I want to show you guys today. I think, especially for my German audience, this could be interesting, because Wolfenstein games, with the exception of the last two, have all been banned in Germany, even though the creators put great effort into removing all Nazi symbols and any other references to the Nazi party. And sorry, I can't keep pronouncing it Wolfenstein. It's Wolfenstein. It just sounds more authentic when you pronounce it the German way, doesn't it? Also, los geht's. Return to Castle Wolfenstein is available in the Steam store to everyone not living in Germany. Germans have to ask a friend from abroad to send it to them as a gift. Since we are talking about a game released in 2001, we don't have to spend much time addressing the graphics. The game runs on the ID Tech 3 engine, also known as the Quake 3 Arena engine. And what many of you may not know, the first Call of Duty game was also powered by the same engine as Return to Castle Wolfenstein. Let me just say that the visuals are good for the time and are still pretty enough not to give you eye cancer today. Gameplay wise this is a classic old school shooter with many packs and the ability to carry an unlimited amount of weapons and grenades are also a separate weapon. The overall theme of the game is a big mix. It incorporates elements of science fiction, occult rituals, mystery, horror and a little bit of stealth into a World War II first person shooter setup. The theme of the respective levels is introduced with a cutscene to set the mood. And I'm going to play you an introduction of a more horror-like chapter, which demonstrates how this game differs from a more regular World War II shooter. It's like a slaughterhouse in here. I know, these things are everywhere. <gasps> what are they? Where did they all come from? Don't ask me, no one ever tells me anything. Oh my god! Did you hear that? Yeah, and I wish I hadn't. We have to get out of here. Follow me back to the entrance. What? The ladder! It's destroyed! They've sealed us in here! Get ready. They're coming! You join these three soldiers as they are making their last stand against the zombies and after that cutscene I almost feel sorry for them. But once you are down there and killed the zombies, they will attack you. I think this demonstrates quite well how the game manages to set the mood for a mission. The story begins with a cutscene in which the whereabouts of two special agents are being discussed, one of which is BJ Blazkowicz, the game's protagonist. The first mission opens up with another cutscene in which one of the secret agents is being tortured to death by a Nazi scientist. Now, let's try it again, shall we? Who do you work for? The active gameplay begins after the scientist sends a guard to pick you up from the cell for further questioning. Once you made it out of your cell with the stereotypical drop down from the ceiling on the prison guard who is wondering why the cell is empty move, you start killing every Nazi that crosses your path. Your mission is to escape from Castle Wolfenstein and meet with a local resistance member of the Kreisau Circle. They will aid you with weaponry and rescue scientists who want to defect from the Nazis. And now, a commercial break. Hey, you have an ad blocker, don't you? Don't wanna even support me by watching annoying ads, eh? You hypocrite, you use adblock yourself! Yeah, but not on YouTube. Alright, fair enough. Well, then let's just get on with the video, shall we? During the course of the game you uncover the plans of SS Oberführer Wilhelm Strasser aka Death's Head, an antagonist known from all later Wolfenstein games. Your hunt for Death's Head will lead you through secret weapon testing facilities in Germany and ultimately to Strasser's remote laboratory in occupied Norway where he works on the Uber Soldier or Uber Soldat, basically the Super Soldier. After destroying Death's Head's work, he flees and doesn't reappear for the rest of the game. 
From the information found in Death's Head's laboratories, you will find out the Nazi plan to resurrect Heinrich, the guy from the game's intro. Actually, an historical figure, though the creators of Wolfenstein took some liberty when it comes to his portrait. <laughs> so you return to Castle Wolfenstein. Yeah, yeah, I used the game's title. So you return to Castle Wolfenstein and confront the demonic reincarnation of Heinrich I to ultimately stop the Nazis from getting a paranormal super weapon and spoil Heinrich Himmler's day, who for some reason is watching the whole battle through binoculars. This American, he has ruined everything. Herr Himmler, the plane is waiting to take you back to Berlin. Sir, the Führer is expecting your arrival. Yeah, yeah. Return to Castle Wolfenstein is a classic you must have played. It is primarily a run and gun shooter with some stealth sections mixed in. And it is really worth it to sneak around quietly from time to time if you want to enjoy the full story of the game. It was bad business back there. Yeah, I agree. Terrible. It's for our own men, our own men be sealed in with those things. I know, I was there, but what else could we do? It was an order, an order from Helga, no less. Yeah, of course, an order. We had to seal off the crypt, there was no time left. Those screams, those horrible screams. Didn't you hear them? I can hear them still. I don't think I ever stop hearing them. Yeah. <laughs> The storytelling in this game operates with four main devices. The previously mentioned cutscenes and conversations between NPCs overheard during the game, as well as level intro texts and documents scattered around the level. These come in the form of clipboards, letters or orders addressed to the soldiers whose position you just cleared out. They are sometimes pinned to a wall or laying on a table. Oh yeah, the game doesn't spoon feeds you everything, you have to do some reading if you want to know the full story. In its 17 levels divided in 7 chapters, you come across a wide variety of enemies, from regular infantry to elite infantry, to leather fetish sex dungeon Nazi mistresses to zombies and crazy biomechanic super soldiers. These make up for the game's rather poor antagonists. The game fails to create a lasting impression of them. The only one I can remember is Death's Head, but only because he is in the other Wolfenstein games. And the fat Nazi bitch here, but only because she's a ridiculous looking fat slob. Yeah, yeah, the extraction process is beginning. It is only a matter of time now. Excellent! With around 10 hours of single player action and a multiplayer which still features active servers, Return to Castle Wolfenstein delivers more than many of today's AAA games, which come along with a way bigger budget. To address the multiplayer real quick, the multiplayer does work and has some nice features like calling in airstrikes and stuff. But even more than in the single player, you notice how old this game is. In the single player you have the problem that the hitboxes are not properly working from time to time and you have no real feedback when you hit an enemy. Sometimes they are twitching animations, but often they do not work. But in the online multiplayer, these problems are really getting annoying. If you are looking for a nice Wolfenstein multiplayer, I would recommend Enemy Territory. That was originally supposed to be an add-on for Return to Castle Wolfenstein, but it was later released as a free multiplayer standalone. Would I recommend playing Return to Castle Wolfenstein, even if it's just for a single player? Yes, definitely. Especially if you like trashy stories. If you approach this game with the same expectations you would approach a movie like Iron Sky with, you can have a great deal of fun. But be aware that even on easy difficulties, you can die relatively quickly. So if you're looking for an old school challenge, there you go, this is the right game for you. As always, I would like to hear your thoughts on today's topic. So see you in the comment section down below. Have a nice day, and as always, goodbye and guten Tag. Up with the defense.